In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the concept of function overloading. It sounds as if, though, this is the idea that you're expecting too much from a function or sending too much information to a function. But no, that's certainly not the case. The concept is that you can define more than one function with the same name, but of course something has to be different, and that is that you have to have different parameter lists. So you have to have either different types and or numbers of parameters. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have an average function that is going to average two integers. Right? But suppose we also want to average two floats, and perhaps we want to do it in a different way. So we declare and define, presumably, another function called average that will take two floats. And likewise, we want to average two characters, and we want to average three floats. So how is this going to work? Here's a call. Suppose that we want to output the average of t and g. The compiler will take a look at this and say, aha, this person is sending two characters to an average function. Do I have an average function that will accept two characters? So it'll look into its function table, or its list of prototypes, and it will identify all the functions that are called average and see if one takes two characters. And yes, that is the case. So this line of code will compile. It's OK. Now suppose that we call the average function and send it two integers. Again, it'll look into its function table, or list of prototypes, and identify that it does have a function that will take two integers, two integer parameters. OK, now suppose that we try to average a single float. Well, obviously, that's not going to work. So we move on. Let's try to average two floats. Do we have a success here? Ah, uh, yes, we do. OK, and so that's the concept of function overloading. It's pretty simple. You can have more than one function with the same name, but you'd better have a different parameter list.